All right. Let's get this started. This is a really strange project. A lot of times, it's a bit of a toy, but um, hopefully you get something out of it. So we're talking about decision trees in Graph. And for the folks that don't know me, my name is Max Zamarzi. I'm a Neo4j sales engineer. I've been with the company for six years. I keep a blog at maxzamarzi.com. There's 141 blog posts on different things you can do with Neo4j. So take a look at that. And all the code, or at least most of the code we write, is open source. And you'll find about 200 public repos on that account. Uh, most of it is MIT licensed. You're free to grab it and steal it and do whatever you want with it. OK. So we're going to start the talk with a sign. And the sign is a really nice sign. And it says, bars, cocktails, dreams, disco, and party. So this is the sign of a, a place we want to get into. Um, we're going to find our dreams here. The problem is there's a dude at the st uh, in front of this sign with this big giant hand saying you can't get in unless you pass some kind of test. Right? There's some rules to getting into uh, this disco. And uh, the rules are anyone over 21 can get in. Okay, simple enough. On some nights, women 18 years or older get in. And some other nights, like once a blue moon, uh, men 18 years or older can get in. And the last two change dynamically. Right? So they can change any time. The rules change whenever they, they feel like it. So how do we, you know, how do we present this in a, in a graph? Well, kind of like this. Right? We have a tree. Uh, these are going to be where decisions are going to fit into. And we have the first rule. The first rule says, are you over 21 or 21 or older? If the answer is true, then you go down to the true node, to the yes uh, node, rather, from the true relationship, and you can get into the club. If it's false, we check something else. We check, OK, are you over 18? And then the gender equals some gender. We don't know what that is just yet. And if that's true, great. You can get in as well. But if it's false, out you go. You can't get into this thing. So here's a bit of a zoom in on what the rule node looks like. Right? We have an expression that says, hey, you have to be over 18, and the gender is female, or whatever that expression can be. It could be anything, as long as you can express it in, in code. In this case, it's Java. The rule node needs to know what kind of parameters it's dealing with. So in this case, we have age and gender as the, as the two parameters we care about. And then um, we need to know what type of parameters these are. One's an integer, one's a string. You can throw an array. You can do whatever you want with it. But we kind of need to know what's there. And, and I'll explain why in a second. All right. So there was a time long, long, long ago before Cypher right, where the traversal API ruled supreme. The traversal API is a, it's a vestige from our Java-only days that basically said, I'm going to describe a traversal, and this thing is going to execute it. Now, the traversal API is a little bit hard to learn, but after a couple of glasses of wine, you're going to get into it. Uh, it has a few things you need to figure out. One is the order. Do you go depth first or do you go breadth first? And 99% of the time, you want to go depth first. It has an evaluator that tells you whether the path is good or not. So you can tell it, do some calculation and do some analytics and tell me whether I want to keep this path or not keep this path. We have uniqueness constraint. You want to have only the nodes be unique or relationships unique. Uh, just keep it to the default. Don't worry about that. And then we have an expander that tells you, where do I go next? So as I'm traversing the graph, which direction do I take? Which relationship type do I take? What's, what's happening? Okay? That's the, the gist of it. So if you need to build a traversal uh, API um, traversal, you have to build these four kind of things in there. If you want to learn more, there's a blog post on this, Flight Search for Neo 4 j Traversal API that explains how to, how to build a complicated one to do flights. Uh, there's also documentation, so go ahead and read up on, on that things. Now, I'm going to build a sort procedure because what, I, what I'm trying to do, I can't do with Cypher. Okay? So this sort procedure is going to take two things. It's going to take the tree that I care about, because obviously our graph can have many trees, many decisions to be made. And then it's going to take a set of facts. Okay? If you've never done a Neo4j Cypher sort procedure, this looks pretty ugly, but it's basically just a little bit of Java code. And you can use any JVM language. So you, look, you want Clojure, you want uh, Kotlin, whatever you want. doesn't matter, as long as it's a JVM language. So this thing um, is going to take some input, like I said, our, our tree, which is a string of where the tree is, and then a set of facts. It could be anything. We're going to find the tree in our graph, and then we're going to say, OK, I'm going to call this decision path method that I'm going to explain next, that takes the tree and the facts. All right? And then we go on a return. Piece of cake, nothing crazy here. So let's look at the decision path. So we need to build a description, like I mentioned. We're going to go depth first, easy enough. We're going to expand using a decision tree expander, which we're going to pass in the facts. And every time we, we traverse, we're going to pass in new facts. That's why we're creating a new one every time. And then the evaluator is just a decision tree evaluator, which we create once. I'm going to go over these. 
but you just understand depth first using a custom expander, using a custom evaluator. Okay, and then we're just gonna traverse from the uh, from the tree down. That's what the last part says. All right. Now, the first thing we need to do is an evaluator. It tells us when do we stop traversing, when do we accept this path or not. And the evaluator looks like this, right? It says if you get to an answer, then stop because the path is good. Include the path and stop working because you found the answer. If not, keep going until you find the answer. Right? Really, really simple. So the evaluator is, is stupid simple. That's all it is. Keep going until you find an answer. <laughs> Next thing we need to do is build the expander. Right? So the expander says, I, I need a couple of things. I need the facts that are coming in. And, and here's where the magic happens. Right? So this particular expander ex has an expression evaluator. This is where we're going to build some dynamic Java, basically. And this thing says, I'm going to return a Boolean, whether it's true or false. Okay, and I'm going to create it every time with a new set of facts. So I'm creating my expander. I'm going to return a Boolean. I have some facts. Now, what do I do? Well, I need to expand. Right? So the expand says, if you get to an answer node, stop. Return nothing. Don't go anywhere. You figured it out. You found the answer. Stop working. But if I haven't found an answer, then I look at the end node, my current node in the path, and I say, hey, if I have any has relationships, then continue on those. Um, otherwise, stop. So what happens? Um, we get to a rule node eventually. And when we get to the rule, we have to evaluate the rule and execute it and see what's going on. Right? So the, the rule node is going to get evaluated into this other method called is true that figures out whether the, the true gets triggered or doesn't get triggered. And if it's true, we continue down the is true relationships. If it's false, we continue down the is false relationships. Okay? And that's it. So now, what is this is true magical method, and what does it do? Is true tells us which way we're going to go, right or left. And the way it works is we take the properties of the rule. This is going to have our parameters, our parameter types, and the expression of what the rule was. Okay? We're going to explode the parameter names. We're going to explode the parameter types into happy little uh, arrays, an array of strings and an array of classes. Nothing crazy here. Okay? And then here comes the magic. right? We are going to create um, these objects from these facts. So we're going to take these facts, pump them into our uh, parameter types, names with their types. We're going to set these parameters into this expression, and then we're going to cook it. Basically means we're actually going to compile the code, and we're actually going to run this, um, this, uh, this code, and we're going to evaluate it and return the results of that evaluation, which, remember, is a Boolean, so it can only be true or false. So we're actually executing this code as we're running the traversal. All right, hopefully you're still with me. So let's try running it, right? And I'm going to uh, not mess with the demo gods and I'm gonna do it dynamically. Once again, we need to bring back Cypher in this case because we have to build a tree. So how do we build a tree in Cypher? Uh, create a tree node, right? Create some rules. The rule says over 21. Uh, second rule is a gender rule, uh, over 18 and some gender. And we have our answer nodes and then we connect everything together. The tree has a rule. The rule has a true relationship, which means get in. It has a false relationship, which means check the second rule. And then the second rule has true and false, just what we saw in the, in the beginning. And it's really, really simple. So now we have to pass in some facts to our sort procedure and see whether we uh, fail or not. So if it's a male, 20 years old, we pass in gender male, age 20, we run this query, it comes back with no. It says, sorry, you're staying home. Uh, you're not allowed to go into the club. And it comes back with a path which tells us how we got to the answer of no. So we went through, has age over 21? Nope. And uh, the gender is not equal female, therefore uh, he doesn't get let in. Now the thing is, you can't get kicked out of a bar if you can't get in, which is kind of nice. But if we check our second user, happens to be a woman who's 19, we run this query, and the answer is true. Why? She's not over 21, right? But she is over 18 and a woman, therefore she can get into, and we get to that yes answer note, so she can, she can get a drink on. Um, so what we've done, right, it's taking code, right, as data, right, and you can pass this on to your end user, or well, put a little interface in front of it, don't make them do Java code, but basically, this thing can change real time, anytime you want, and you can run it magically and it'll get you the right answer, uh, hopefully every single time. Uh, which is kind of neat. This came from a project where um, they were building 
drug recommendations. But these drug recommendations were based on research. The research uh, comes out every month, every quarter, and they have the decision tree of what drug do I, rec do I give someone based on all the evidence of all the medical papers that have come out. So it's just some doctors who are analyzing this data and building a decision tree based on it. So now obviously you can do, there's many ways to build a decision tree. These guys are doing it by hand through just expert knowledge, which is the, the, the physicians knowing this stuff. But uh, there's other ways to build decision trees. But you can take the decision tree, put it into the graph, and then try running it, try changing it real time and, and seeing what happens. Um, if you want to learn more about this, there's a whole blog post called Dynamic Rule-Based Decision Trees in Neo4j uh, from earlier in January of this year. And if you want to get fancy and say, okay, I don't want a decision tree, I want to do something a little bit fancier than this, uh, we have you know, like multiple options. What if I want to go A, B, or C directions, or 10 directions, depending on what's going on, right? Multiple options. Well, that is part two, which is also on the blog that explains how to do this, which is kind of nice. And uh, the blog posts are a little weird because NDAs and all that, so they, we can use real examples, so that's, that's what we got. But um, the second part uses what's called the decision stream, which is like way better than decision tree because it can kind of merge things together. And there's actually some, this is a paper that came out, I wanna say a few months ago or maybe a year ago, uh, on how to build decision streams, which are sometimes better than random forests. Then you can build random forests of decision streams, which is, Crazy, but anyway, uh, that's the paper. There's the authors, and it's actually it's coded. So somebody wrote the code for this. So you can't like it's not just paperware. It's real physical software. You can actually run and try and, and get decision streams out, and you can take decision streams, stick them to Neo4j, and, and play with them uh, if you like. Uh, this code and everything else is open source. It's MIT licensed. So if you go to maximize.com on GitHub rather slash decision uh, trees with Neo4j, you'll find it and you're free to uh, grab it and play with it and, and do whatever you want. And if you have any suggestions or anything better, of course, send me a, send me a pull request. But uh, that's it. Now, do we have uh, time? Maybe a minute or two? I'll show you the, the real deal, so I'm not. This is our, our happy little graph. Here is a, one, a male, 20 years old, right? We try to run it. It says, nope, you can't get in, so it's actually pretty fast. What we can do is we can change our query and say, you know what? Tonight, man can get in, so I'm going to run this query, and now when I rerun the query with the, the, new, the same facts, I get a yes. Right? So it's dynamic, you can change it, it runs, it's fast. What else do you want? All right, thank you.